All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Whiskey Investment Insights live stream webinar. Uh, my name is Ryan Longoria. Uh, who I am is I'm a uh, whiskey broker here at Cask X uh, Investment Company. Um, I'm one of the, the brokers that help manage uh, clients' whiskey portfolios. So if you were working with me, uh, I'd be able to give you a call Give, give you an update on your uh, whiskey investment portfolio, um, do the whole the whole nine yards. So if during the webinar, I'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, if I am unable to, to answer any of your questions, feel free to just send me an email to ryanl at caskx.com. Uh, I'll be able to answer the questions uh, once I get off the webinar here. So what this webinar is going to uh, entails just a brief over, overview of uh, who we are here at Cask X, the services that we provide, um, how Bourbon Barrel Investments could be a great addition uh, to your investment portfolio as a diversification. So uh, what we do is we're a uh, whiskey brokerage. We specialize in two markets, the Scotch whiskey market and of course the American bourbon market. Now, We've been open for six years. Uh, we started off in Sydney, Australia, specializing in only Scotch uh, whiskey back in 2017. Uh, we then opened up our second location in Hong Kong. And as we were uh, working overseas, we realized the demand that you know bourbon has overseas. So that's when we uh, realized, you know, let's let's go ahead and, and get into the bourbon market. And in 2020, that's when we finally opened up our first location here in Los Angeles, California, Beverly Hills. Uh, that's where we're now headquartered. So we've been here for uh, a little under three years now uh, in Los Angeles, California. Uh, we've seen the bourbon boom happening. And obviously now, um, as many of you may know, there's a, a, there's a bourbon boom that, that's going on, uh, not only here in the United States, but globally. So what we provide for every client is full portfolio management. So what I mean by that is from start to finish, uh, we're here to help guide you from purchasing the barrels to selling the barrels. So we actually uh, work with the distilleries. We purchase barrels from distilleries. Um, we would provide you with the eight years of storage, uh, the eight years of insurance. And then of course, for us, since we've been doing this now for six years, when it does come time to liquidate or sell the barrels, we're able to sell these barrels very quickly uh, on the secondary market. So what is Cask X Investments? Before I get into this, uh, I just want to clarify, right? Because what makes bourbon a bourbon? Because uh, I have a lot of clients who are in the bluegrass state uh, who will testify against this, but uh, bourbon does not have to come from Kentucky. OK, so a lot of people think bourbon has to come from Kentucky and it does it. There's actually six guidelines or I should say seven uh, guidelines that really uh, factor what what's bourbon. So number one is it has to be made here in the United States. OK, number two is it has to have a minimum of 51 percent corn in the mash bill. OK, number three is it has to be aged in new white oak charred barrels. Cannot be anything other than new. New barrels cannot be used barrels. Four and five is it has to be distilled at 100, no more than 160 proof. Uh, it cannot be barreled then no more than 125 proof. Six, seven would be for it to be considered a straight bourbon. It has to be aged for a minimum of two years. All right, that's for it to be considered a straight bourbon. Number seven, it cannot have, you cannot add any coloring or flavoring. Uh, uh, in that case, if you know distilleries did do that, it would be considered a flavored whiskey. It wouldn't be considered a bourbon. Okay, so I'm not by any means a master distiller. Okay, I'm not here to give you guys a master class on how to distill. This is simply uh, a few images to help illustrate what we specialize in, which is new make whiskey. Okay, we do not specialize in any age type of bourbon. What I mean by new make whiskey is it simply going into the barrel. 
that has not started the aging process yet. So you can see in the top left corner, we actually have Craig Bean, who's actually the head distiller at Jackson Purchase Distillery. If you guys don't know who Craig Beam is, I mean, he's a, he's a living legend in Kentucky. Uh, he was the master distiller for, I believe, over 10 years at Heaven Hill before he started his own distillery with Jackson Purchase Distillery. So he's hanging around a fermentation tank, okay? What these fermentation tanks are used for is just to simply extract the alcohol from the sugars, okay? Uh, the fermentation tanks, they add typically yeast, to these fermentation tanks. And what the yeast acts as is a microorganism, which turns the sugars into ethanol, which is alcohol, and also carbon dioxide, which is the reason why you see it bubbling. Whenever you go to the distilleries, uh, I believe, for instance, you know, we went out to the Kentucky Artisan Distillery uh, recently. Uh, Chris Miller let us stick our hand in the fermentation tanks. I mean, it was super sweet. Uh, I, I liked it actually, but from the fermentation tanks, for this process typically takes, I would say, about one to two weeks. Some distilleries can get it done in about three to four days. Once this is done, the mixture is then considered a, uh, a distiller's beer, right? That's what an, another name for it is called. From these tanks, it's then pumped into a still. The still then turns the liquid into alcohol vapors. From the still, it goes into a condenser. The condenser turns the vapor from uh, alcohol vapor back into a liquid. Now, I know most distilleries, they do a second distillation process where from the condenser, it actually goes into a doubler, which is just a, a way for it to take out a little bit more of the impurities. Okay, now, once it's, once it's out of the doubler, then it goes into what they call holding tanks because that's where they do quality control on the bourbon before it's actually put into the barrel. So in the bottom right picture, you actually see uh, what the liquid looks like before it goes into a barrel. A lot of people that I talk with, they think it, you know, it goes straight into the, the barrel from the vat and it's a brown liquid. It's not by any means. This is what they call white dog. A lot of people may have heard of another term, which is called moonshine. Okay. It's what it is. It's just a clear liquid. You can see here, um, as far as the, uh, once it's from the holding tanks, they put it straight into the barrel. A lot of times the distilleries, they water it down uh, for, for it to be under that 125 proof. So they may add some water to help water it down. Um, but as far as uh, some questions I do show here, I see Chuck asked, uh, can we customize our own mash bill? Uh, no, we do not allow clients to customize their own mash bill. Uh, we actually, uh, purchase, you know, these barrels ahead of time from distilleries, and we actually know or they provide us with the mash bill uh, that we would be receiving. Now, the barrels on the right-hand side, you can see it has our Cask X logos, logo, excuse me, spray painted on it. So a lot of times the distilleries, they'll spray paint uh, the Cask X logo, logo on the side of the barrels uh, because it just differentiates our barrels from the barrels that, that they have uh, that belong to them. So the barrels are 53 gallon barrels. Uh, they're your traditional bourbon barrels. All right. Now, if you guys see here, I mean, this is just another image uh, that we use to help di differentiate what new make bourbon is uh, to, you know, a four year old and a 13 year old bourbon. OK, now for a, a lot of people who are wondering why we don't uh, you know, specialize in aged bourbon. The reason why that is that we specialize in new make bourbon is because it gives investors the greatest potential over time, right? And what we mean by that is as bourbon sits in the barrel, as it matures, as it ages, it's going to increase in value, right? So that's the reason why we really specialize and focus in new make bourbon. Now, in this photo here, you see new make bourbon is a clear liquid. It's white dog. It's moonshine. Once it gets to four years old, you obviously see uh, the darkness, right? It's a brown color. Now, the reason why the liquid turns brown is because it's impacted by the wood. So as you can see, as the barrel ages, as the liquid ages in the barrel for a longer period of time, 
that's when the, the shade for a 13 year old you can see is darker than a four year old. So the Pappy Van Winkles, if it goes into 20 plus years, that's gonna be older than a 13 year old, or excuse me, it's gonna be a, a darker color, right? Than a 13 year old. So a lot of people don't understand this. They think once it hits the bottle, uh, it continues to age, right? And I'll, I'll tell you guys a story. I, I had a buddy not too long ago, uh, went over to his house, he had these very antique bottles, okay? They were just sitting, sitting on the, the, the top shelf. Uh, he pulled one down, had a couple of cobwebs, spider webs over it. He, he cleaned it off and he said, he told me, Ryan, look at this. He's like, this has got to be worth some money. Took a look at it. It read four-year-old bourbon, right? I told him, look, man, I, I don't mean to uh, break your dreams or crush your dreams, but this bottle isn't going to be worth much. It's a four-year-old bourbon, and he tried to argue, no, this has got to, this is, this has got to be worth some money. It was passed down from a generation. You know, it, it's been sitting here for, a, for at least 20 years. And I, I told him, look, bourbon, it does not age in a bottle. Okay. It's not like wine where wine it goes into a bottle and it ages. No, bourbon only ages in a barrel. Okay. So just so everyone knows, as soon as it hits a bottle, comes out of the barrel, it no longer ages. So that's why you have these super premium brands like, you know, Pappy Van Winkle that were in the bottle for, or barrel, excuse me, for 25 years, right? Those have been sitting in the barrel for 25 years. So once they hit the bottle, it's a 25 year old, okay? Just so everyone is, uh, everyone knows um, exactly how the bourbon process is. Now, for us as a company, um, a lot of the, the whiskey or the, I would say the, the brands are expanding. Um, and this is a perfect example, right? There's new brands that are popping up because a lot of these uh, bottling companies or these brands such as Pinhook, Jefferson's, Remus, right? Uh, the J James E. Pepper, uh, that, th these are brands and labels, okay? The way they differentiate from distilleries is the fact that they're not actually a distillery. A lot of people, they think brands and labels, what they see at the, you know, at their liquor store or at their market, that's the distillery name, right? To give you an example, Pinhook, that's not a distillery. Pinhook is actually uh, made by Castle and Key. Jefferson's, right? Kentucky Artisan Distillery is the home of Jefferson's, right? Remus is sourced from MGP. So a lot of these brands and labels are, are different, right? 90% of this whiskey market is blended. That includes scotch. There's only about 10% that's a single malt for scotch or a single barrel for bourbon. So that's why for us as a company, the way we are involved in the market is we are on the wholesale side, okay? Who we sell to may be the retail side, which are these independent bottlers who are most likely gonna take these barrels, blend them with other allocations, create their own brands, labels with them, right? And to answer your question, Steve, yes. Uh, I could, if, if, can we sell to independent bottlers? Yes, this is a, a way for us. Uh, to exit for clients. This is one of the exit strategies that we have in place uh, is to, to sell to these independent bottlers. We actually, we, we actually work with, you know, auction houses, collectors, individuals who are looking to buy uh, aged barrels. So it's not specifically just to independent bottlers we sell to, but I would say 70% of the allocations we have will end up in an independent bottler's hand. Now, the driving factor for this market it's, it's economics 101 right now, it's supply and demand, right? There is a massive shortage that's happening right now in the bourbon market that's coupled with the global demand that's increased dramatically. Now, if you guys take a look at this chart, this is simply showing the US American whiskey uh, that was sold here in the United States, right? These are nine liter cases. So uh, the great thing about whiskey as an investment is it's uncorrelated to the stock market. Right. And if we take a look at the chart, if you look from 2008, 2009, right, that's what that was a, uh, a year. 2008 was a year of the recession. The whiskey market still grew dear, during that recession. So the great thing about whiskey, like I mentioned in the beginning of the call, is it's not something that's correlated to the stock market. Right. No matter what's going on in our economy, it's not going to have an effect on whiskey. 
And like I know, uh, uh, there's a little saying, people drink during good times, they're gonna drink just a little bit more during bad times, right? So it's always being drank. Now, it's unlike, I guess if you wanna compare it to, to gold, right? Gold is also a tangible asset. Now, gold fluctuates with the economy, right? So that just kind of gives you an analogy of what you could compare it to since whiskey, it is a tangible asset, right? These are your own physical bourbon barrels that you would be owning, right? And the great thing about bourbon or owning such uh, this as a tangible asset is it's not like a, a stock, right? Stocks you invest. I know for me, myself, I have stocks myself. I wake up every morning. The first thing I look at is my stocks, right? This is a, a lot different. This is what we call somewhat of an armchair investment where you just let it sit. It matures in age. It'll appreciate in value. Right. There's nothing you need to do to, to be checking on the barrels every day like a stock market. You're not going to wake up and be down five percent. Right. Like so, some of us have been on in the stock market. Now, uh, the demand on the rise, you guys could see here. This was actually a report that was just released this year on the distilled. Excuse me, this month uh, on the distilled spirits council. This shows you the top five export markets for bourbon. OK, we got the EU, Australia, the UK, Japan and then Canada. I'm not sure how familiar uh, most of you may be in the bourbon market. But in 2018, there is a 25 percent tariff that was put on bourbon going to the EU and the UK. Now, as of January of last year, those tariffs were completely abolished. The one going to the EU was abolished in January. The one going to the UK was abolished in June of last year. When those tariffs were abolished at the beginning of last year, you could see it opened up the floodgates, right, for bourbon overseas, which is the reason why it could be one of the biggest reasons why a lot of these distilleries like Buffalo Trace, Heaven Hill, uh, you got Willet. A lot of these distilleries are spending hundreds of millions of dollars into expansions, right? Everyone is trying to expand. Everyone is currently trying to ramp up production to meet the demand of the bourbon market. Currently, the bourbon market is far behind the eight, the eight ball when we talk about supply, right? So for us as a company, and this is what I tell clients, is we don't see supply catching up to demand for a minimum eight to 10 year window. The reason why that is, is because bourbon, it's not like beer. You can't distill today, bottle and sell it tomorrow. Does not work like that, right? These barrels, they got to sit on the shelf for a minimum four or five years before they're even bottled or sold. So you guys can see this is the same chart that was pulled from the Distilled Spirits Council that was released earlier uh, this month. The whiskey mar market itself, right, or the spirits exports uh, market has grown to 2.1 billion from 2002 to 2022, right? American whiskey accounted for 62% of the total spirits exported within this past year. That just shows these tariffs that were abolished opened the floodgates for bourbon overseas, right? Which is the reason why these distilleries are spending hundreds of millions of dollars. If they didn't see demand increasing within the next foreseeable five, 10, 15 years, they wouldn't be investing hundreds of millions of dollars in their distilleries, right, to expand. That doesn't take account for the India market that's growing right now uh, for, for demand in bourbon. Also the China market right now is currently growing, right, for the demand in bourbon, or I should just say American whiskey in general, right? So when you factor in those other countries, that is a, a, a big jump up for more markets that are gonna become in demand for bourbon. Now for us as a company, like I, I told you guys earlier at the beginning of the call, uh, when we first started off in Scotch, you know, uh, six years ago, and we started seeing the demand grow overseas for bourbon, we've seen the same dynamics as scotch, right? Because the, traje the trajectory, if you look at what happened to scotch about 10 to 15 years ago, it follows the same path as what's going on with bourbon currently, right? Bourbon, we still see it as a ground floor opportunity. And the reason why that is, is simply because these distilleries are barely breaking ground on expansions, 
right? They haven't fully completed any of the ex expansions just yet. The benefits of investing in whiskey casks or bourbon barrels is, is number one, it's a tangible asset, right? It's a physical. You could, yes, of course, visit your barrels, okay? If you ever wanted to go to the distilleries, you would let us know. We would organize with the distillery. Uh, Steve wants to visit his barrels. We'll go ahead and get that, you know, taken care of for you, all right? Number two is all of these distilleries are, are, have to have a DSP license. The DSP license, is a, it just means it's a government regulated storage, right? It's another way to safeguard your investment. You know that where your barrels are stored through the distillery, it is safeguarded by these licenses that are in place uh, that these distilleries must have in order to store barrels. Um, I see Kevin, can you, transfer the barrels if you wanted to pick them up. No, you cannot transfer the barrels, okay? The only way you could move barrels is if you have a government regulated rickhouse, right? If you have a rickhouse that has uh, the DSP license, then yes, we'd be able to move the barrels from one rickhouse to another, but you cannot just drive up to, this, to, to the distillery, throw your barrels in the, in the truck and take off. No, it does, does not work like that, okay? Guaranteed provenance. All right, you know where the barrels are being, or the, the whiskey is coming from, number one, right? You have all of the ownership documents to provide, so that way you know uh, this distillery, these are my barrels, these are my serial numbers to my barrels, okay? And it's it's not like, uh, I know there's a lot of people, they sell, you know, for instance, uh, Pappy Van Winkle bottles, right? The reason why they sell these Pappy Van Winkle bottles for 100 to $200 is because, you know, they're, they're going to fill it with uh, some sort of whiskey, try to resell it for thousands of dollars, right? In this case, there it's not possible for anyone to do that because you know these, this whiskey is being distilled at a specific distillery, right? And I know in, I believe in China, there, there's like a, a saying, I believe, uh, that I heard is in China, they sold more Johnny Walker Blue uh, in China than there was actually produced in Scotland. Right, so uh, you know the guaranteed providence, you know where this whiskey is coming from. Continued maturation, all right? This is something that you as an owner of the barrels have full control over. For us, being your, your whiskey broker, for myself, if I was your whiskey broker, I cannot sell the barrels from under you. These are your barrels. Like I stated in the beginning of the call, I can only help guide you in and out of the sale. I can re recommend, hey, let's go ahead and sell, I cannot sell the barrels, okay? So for you, if you were to hold the barrels for let's just say eight years, yes, your barrels are gonna have a much higher demand. The value, the value of the barrels are gonna be much more than a four-year-old barrel, right? So for you, you have full control, um, being that this is you know, uh, a barrel investment, you're able to you know, say, Ryan, let's sell half of my allocation in four years. I want to keep the other half for eight years. You do not need to sell these barrels in full lots, right? And it, this is where we differentiate from a fund because a fund, you have no say so, right? They sell the barrels for you. In this case, you have full control of what you want to do with the barrels. You, yes, you can even bottle a barrel if you really wanted to. It's very easy to get started in this process for investments for for us as a company and for you uh, as an investor. The reason why that is is because we do all the legwork, right? We find the distilleries, uh, we purchase the barrels, we help manage your portfolio over time, right? And when it does come time to sell to liquidate, yes, we sell the barrels for you. Okay, I know right now currently we are charging a five percent brokerage fee on the selling price of the barrels. Okay, so that is our fee. That's where we make majority of our money is going to be on the exit. All right. Now, how it works or how you would be able to get involved. Number one is we are under the SEC regulations. Okay, so we are required to work with accredited investors only. So we would have to then get you verified as an accredited investor. Okay, after that, you would speak to myself or one of the senior brokers here at Cask X we'd be able to, to go over some of the distilleries that we currently have in stock. We'd be able to go find you the, the perfect portfolio. Um, we'd recommend you a portfolio, I should say. And then we purchase, or you would purchase or invest uh, in this distilleries or the bourbon, right? Um, and what we then send you 
are all of your ownership documents. So once you invest, once the barrels are filled, the distillery provides us with the serial numbers and the certifications to the, your barrels. What we then do is we will send all of the documentation to you as an individual. So you'll have all the documentation that show, hey, these are my barrels. Uh, I own barrel number, you know, one, two, three, four. So you receive all the documentation for your ownership. Storage and insurance, all right? What we provide for all of our clients is eight years of storage and eight years of insurance, okay? Doesn't matter where, if it's in Tennessee or in Kentucky, we provide eight years of insurance, eight years of storage. Yes, I, I know someone asked a question. Uh, if you wanted to hold after eight years, do we have contracts in place? Yes, we have contracts in place. So if you wanted to hold past eight years, we do have contracts in place for clients who want to hold past eight years. I have some clients who want to hold maybe 10, 11, 12, or 13 years, right? You, you have the ability to do that. Again, these are your barrels, okay? Monetization, right? Liquidating these barrels is very, very easy for us, especially to the secondary market because of everything right now, the shortages that are happening. Uh, a lot of these independent bottlers may call us, hey, we're looking for a four or five-year-old barrel. Right. For us, we would go to the clients. We have an offering of barrels. Do you guys want to sell? OK, I know someone said, do we source uh, from Willet or MGP? Uh, as of right now, no, we're, we're not sourcing from uh, Willet or MGP. Uh, do you have employees located in Kentucky? Yes, we have uh, an office actually in Louisville, Kentucky. We're a whiskey expert. Uh, Sarah Haven, she's actually uh, located in Kentucky. Now, for the selling part of this uh, investment, okay, a lot of people, they'll ask, can I sell after the first year? If you have to sell, you can sell after the first year. Now, I don't recommend it. The reason why that is, is because this is an investment that's going to take about four to eight years before you see you know, the, the real profit. So for us, we recommend clients holding four to eight years. That is going to be the sweet spot for bourbon. But if you had to sell and you had to liquidate after the first year, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay. Now the advantage for CaskX, we're number one is investment focused. All right. I know a lot of people who invest, uh, they like bourbon. They're fans of bourbon, right? But at the end of the day, this is an investment, especially with the economic downturn that we're facing currently. Uh, a lot of people are looking at this as a diversification for their assets, right? And it's all about wealth preservation for us because the barrels are insured, so your capital is secured in this investment. Okay, so this we are an investment focused first firm. And then, yes, of course, if you wanted to add a little bit of fun, you'd be able to bottle a barrel if you really wanted to, right? We work directly with the distilleries. That's what differentiates us from a lot of, you know, brokerages. A lot of brokerages may use a third party uh, to, to, you know, purchase barrels from a distiller. We do not. We work directly with the distillery. The way, the reason why distilleries want to work with us is because of cash flow, right? We provide uh, distilleries with cash flow to be able to expand, to be able to ramp up their production, right? So that's how we get involved with distilleries. Now, we also have for all of our clients, a third party inspection done. Okay, this third party inspection, we use a, an accounting firm called Dean Dorton, which they do uh, almost like a stock tag. They'll go to the distillery, uh, they'll say barrel number, you know, 234 is located in the distillery. Every client gets a letter on a yearly basis from us because not every client is going to be able to go to the distillery, right? Not everyone can get out there year every year. So what we do is we give them the peace of mind by we get, a, we get audits done or stock tag, I should say, on the barrels where the third party brokerage that we use or accounting firm, excuse me, uh, Dean Doring goes to the distilleries. Uh, they say, yes, the barrels are here stored uh, in the distillery. Serial number, barrel number 234 is there at the distillery, right? And every client, like I said, will get one of those. Another way we help clients manage uh, their portfolio. And if clients wanted to manage your own portfolio, you're more than welcome to do so with the online portal. The online portal, you'll be able to see where the barrels are stored, the distillery information, 
all of your certifications to your barrels will be uploaded to the portal. Uh, all of the serial numbers to your barrels will be uploaded to the portal. And of course, the, the Dean Dorton letter will be uploaded to the portal as well. So you have everything at your fingertips. We'll provide all of our clients with a user ID and password uh, to the online portal. And again, complete portfolio management. Like I said, we do all of the legwork here. Uh, this is really an armchair investment for a lot of our clients, uh, where me as myself being a senior broker, I try to call my clients at least once a quarter, give them an update on the barrels. What are the prices that these barrels are currently selling for? Um, so you would, if you if you're not a you know uh, one of my clients, one of the senior brokers here will be able to do a complete portfolio management for you. Feel free to give us a call. Uh, we'll be able to answer any questions that you guys may have. Now, some of the distillery partners that we partnered with in the past, and some of them that we're currently partnered with now. Okay, uh, you got Kentucky Artisan Distillery. Kentucky Artisan Distillery, they're located out of Crestwood, uh, Kentucky. For some of you that don't know Kentucky Artisan Distillery, uh, they're the home of Jefferson's Bird. Jackson Purchase Distillery, okay, they're located out of Hickman, Kentucky, which is um, Western Kentucky. And if you guys do not know who Jackson Purchase Distillery is, Craig Beam, I talked about him earlier in the call. Uh, he's actually the master and part owner of Jackson Purchase Distillery. He's the master distiller there at Jackson Purchase Distillery. Terry Ballard is the assistant master distiller at Jackson Purchase Distillery. Terry Ballard, if you guys do not know, he was a master distiller for some time at Willett, another big time distillery, right? We have Corsair Distillery located out of Nashville. Corsair is probably one of the most award-winning distilleries that we've worked with. Uh, then you have Nashville Craft Distillery, also located out of Nashville, and then Old Glory uh, Distilling coming out of Clarksville, Tennessee. So those three distilleries are, yes, part of the, the Tennessee Whiskey Trail, okay? Now, some of the distillery partners just kind of put a, a, a face to the name. Uh, you have Craig Beam in the top left, okay? Uh, here on the top right, you have Derek Bell, one of the owners, Okay, then you have Jeremy Kastler in the bottom left. That's the CEO of our company. And then behind him, you have Jade Peterson, who's actually the uh, master distiller uh, over at Kentucky Artisan Distillery. And then here in the bottom right, you have Chris Miller, who's the VP of Kentucky Artisan Distillery. Some of these gentlemen you may be able to, to, to meet in person. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because we actually do VIP client tours. This is where we add the little fun into this investment for all of our clients. And what we do is depending on whether you do a Tennessee distillery or a Kentucky distillery, uh, what we do is we typically put clients up for a few nights, okay, in either Louisville or Nashville. What then happens is our whiskey, one of our whiskey experts comes, will come along, pick you guys up, take you out to the distillery, do some samplings, do a VIP tour, meet the people, you know, at the distillery who are making uh, the bourbon, okay? Now, if you are interested in hearing a little bit more about what distilleries we have to offer, um, or if you're interested uh, in, or if you have any more questions, excuse me, that I did not get to answer, okay? Currently, right now, we have Kentucky and Tennessee. I know our inventory is changing on the daily. Uh, and the reason why our inventory is changed on the daily is because a lot of these distilleries uh, that we used to get, you know, uh, 600, 500 barrels a quarter from, they're no longer doing that. They're only giving us about 100, maybe 200 barrels a quarter now. And the reason why that is because of the shortages that are happening right now in the market. So our inventory is changing daily, I would say, for Kentucky and Tennessee. If you are interested, you could either email your broker or click on the link below and you'd be able to schedule a consultation uh, with either me or one of the senior brokers here. Uh, again, if you, if you have any questions, feel free to just send me an email, ryanl at castx.com. Uh, so any questions for me on how this investment works? Mm, so I see Phil, do the mainstream names, uh, Wild Turkey, produce their own. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of these distilleries, some distilleries produce their own. A lot of them, like I said, they're sourced, they blend it with different distilleries uh, or allocations. Is it insured in the Rick House? Yes, uh, Peter, it is insured in the Rick House. Um, I see John, what is the, the average investment? So the average investment level um, is gonna be around 45, 50 barrels, which could be around $100,000. 
I know we have a maximum currently in place for 150 barrels. The reason why we put that 150 barrel maximum in place is simply because a lot of these uh, funds were buying up all of our allocation. So we had to put 150 barrel maximum in place. Uh, let's see, is anyone providing guidance for tasting testing in the cast eight years to hold? Uh, yes, like I said, you'd be able to reach out to us. We'd be able to get the tastings done for you. Uh, newly distilled barrels, nothing. We don't currently, Mike, have any aged uh, barrels that we're selling for investors. Uh, the only aged barrels we have at this point are for clients. Uh, the clients are the only ones that have aged barrels. If they wanted to sell, uh, possibly we may have some aged barrels available. Um, so everyone, if you have any more questions for me, feel free again to send me an email, ryanallencaskex.com or one of the senior brokers here uh, will be reaching out to you uh, or you can reach out to them and ask them any questions you have. But other than that, thank you again for everyone joining me today on this live webinar. I hope it was useful. Um, I look forward to, to hearing from some of you guys. Take care, okay?